So, finally, we are here. This is the official last week of Johannes Gustafsson as the chief conductor of the Aulu Symphony. You're conducting a concert filled with Wagner Opera this week. Uh, your term here was prolonged many times. Instead of staying here for three or four years as you planned, some coincidences <laughs> led to this situation where you have been serving here for eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts finally at this moment when this long term is coming to an end? I don't know yet. <laughs> it's a bit strange to think about. You don't think about time in, in that that way. I mean, you you actually always look ahead when you work, I find, and then all of a sudden you need to look back and then you realize it's been a long time. It's actually nine and a half years, actually, <laughs> so it's, it's quite some time. But what is going on in your life at the moment? Is this now a situation of saying goodbye to Oulu or are you already anxiously waiting for something new to happen in your life? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. With Oulu, it's, it's one thing being, being uh, you know, responsible for all the planning and all the, the big work. And, and we, we did so much work together. So, and I think it every, it's, it's also a positive thing to get new energy into uh, an institution or an orchestra to, to, to get more. And I think it's time. So I think it's a, it's a good time to stop and, and hand over the torch to Rumon. Talking about, talking about planning, we have discovered that your planning has been excellent. Your choice of guest conductors and guest soloists has been extremely good. What is your secret in this? No, and there is no secret. You have to, of course, sometimes be a bit lucky, but intuition is important, I think. And also knowing what to, um, what to put up against each other. And you, it's important also to, of course, sometimes mistakes occur that, that certain, certain artists don't really fit with certain repertoire, but I think that we were most of the time it was working good. I'm happy to hear that you like it. Yeah. What were your artistic goals when you began and have you achieved them? In your, um, I, I wasn't so very specific. I just sort of want in, I've always been thinking of, of, of adding rather than changing is a good policy I find to, to sort of make things more flexible, more sort of different kind of repertoire, maybe broader kind of repertoire, stylistic points. Uh, so, and we've been doing it as one, if one looks at the progress back, it's been very sort of focused on maybe over a season or two, we have played lots of music from one composer or from a certain style. And I think that this has helped the, the adding or the development because you get into this language together also. Um, so the way I perceive Mozart or Bartok is, is then easier for the orchestra to understand and then we sort of we develop a mutual language. One of the new things that you started is mini festivals. You push the orchestra to the limit when you do two or three concerts in a rapid tempo. For example, you played all Beethoven piano concertos and mm. so on. What is the meaning of this mini festival? Uh, no, but it's, it's a bit the same thing as I talked about just just previously, but to, to really focus on a style or, or an idea. But it has also been something that we've been gradually through the years developing in actually, you know, grasping or t uh, handling a bigger program in shorter time. And this week we maybe have, I think we have the biggest one we ever had in my time. And did you notice that the new chief conductor has picked up this idea of mini festivals? He's doing one immediately now in the beginning good. in a couple of weeks. That's nice. It's a good compliment. Yeah. Uh, then, of course, Corona happened, which was one of the reasons why your term here was prolonged. Mm -hmm. But you managed to somehow turn the Corona period into some kind of artistic victory because <laughs> you started streaming concerts mm -hmm. and suddenly we noticed that uh, the numbers of viewers were quite high. There were thousands of people watching the streamed concerts mm -hmm. of Oulu Symphony. How did you remember the Corona time with <laughs> Oulu Symphony? First, I was very upset because <laughs> you know everything just froze and stopped. But then I think from from after last summer, so I mean, so to say the 
the 2021 season, I think the administration and the orchestra here has done an excellent job in keeping the morals up, as, as you say, new, new programs every week playing, also handling the, the, the difficulty with the distancing. I mean, we talk about streaming concert is one thing, but, but actually playing sitting so far apart is it's a challenge. What is your night to remember from all these years? What is the when you oh, yeah. when you look back in after ten years and you remember the best evenings of all the symphony? What will you remember? Oi. Well, that's tough. Uh, I do remember when we did this Wagner Valkyrie first act some years ago with with Camilla and Mickey Venus and, and Matti Salmen, and that was a. Just because it was such a special repertoire, but but there are so many of these things, as you said, the Beethoven concertos with with Ronald or, or the Bartok concertos with Olli Mustan. And, uh, but I, uh, one thing that I feel that we could brag about a bit is that there are very few of all these concerts that we did. I don't know how many actually. I need to count at some point, but uh, they have been all quite good. I always felt that okay. Sometimes difficult weeks and 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 tough working there but it has been sort of some r opening or ending every concert that has has given us energy to move to the next week so i i think we should be quite proud of that what are your final words of advice <laughs> or goodbye to the audience here in Oulu <laughs> and to the new conductor no, I, th Gamba? I think one should continue to ca take care of of the, the, uh, the beautiful orchestra that is here and also continue to support uh, the cultural life up here which is, is very good but it always needs support and especially now when we go towards this 2026 year which is going to be rather special I think it's a good time to strengthen the positions and, and be, you know, take care of what we have and make sure we don't uh, lose interest in, in, in communicating culture and music.